I figure, let's start off with a bit of a fun story. So my parents put their name into a raffle, and one of the prizes they ended up winning was a local nail salon. Neither my mother nor my sister wanted anything to do with it, so I'm like, you know what, I'll take it. And both of them looked at me and said, sure, why not? So I went in. I will admit, I kind of held on to this gift card for a while, and I only really used it just this month. I've been to nail salons before. That's not really something that I consider nerve-wracking. But the thing that was rather interesting with this visit, I seem to have went on a day that was just completely swamped. There was so many people waiting in line to get their nails done, and I'm like, who's got the time this early in the morning? But apparently a lot of women did. I had a denim jacket on that day, and the person I was sitting next to also had a denim jacket on, so we hit it off and we had a bit of a nice conversation, starting with just what we were wearing. And I get the feeling I probably mentioned this in other videos as well, but growing up, Girls were terrifying. I was told that they were made of glass, so if you handled them the wrong way, they would easily shatter on you and it'd be a very painful experience. But maybe it's because now that I am one now, women just don't really seem all that scary anymore. When it comes to my progress for the transition itself, Oh boy, this month was quite a roller coaster, let me tell you. Probably the first major thing to mention was I finally got in contact with a surgeon, and they gave me a tentative date of February of next year. I was very excited for this. I was very much looking forward to it. It seemed like everything was happening at just the right time. However, a few days after making the appointment, my endocrinologist gave me a phone call, and yeah, all the things I found quite convenient for this particular surgeon can cause a lot of complications down the road. So, after all the effort I took to even get to this guy, I kind of had to forfeit, and now I'm starting the process trying to find another surgeon. I do feel a little more confident in my next choice as it's a transgender clinic. That's all they do, rather than just an expert in a general hospital. But I get the feeling that I'm going to get a higher level quality care, but... Huh. It, is that ever depressing? And as for the hormone situation, well, I finally went in to get that ultrasound done and I really don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that the doctor told me that there were no abnormalities. It just feels like I wasn't going to win in either situation. Either it was going to be an abnormality and they would have to be removed right away and probably covered under insurance because of it. Or there was going to be no abnormality, and then we would just have to adjust the regimen accordingly. But even now, still not really sure what the deal is with that, but I can definitely tell you my testosterone is way too high. Not only is the hair coming back, but so is the insomnia of the first puberty. Like, I'm not sure if this was experience of everybody that went through male puberty, but... For me, I just, I didn't sleep. Like, maybe I would get three, four hours of sleep a night, and it's starting to become a very similar regiment again. I have this other trans friend that was talking about my, shall we say, process of involuntarily detransitioning. And I guess it really just puts it in the perspective as I said I feel like I am 16 all over again. For a lot of people, that would be a fantastic thing. Oh look, I have a ton of energy again. My sex drive is back. All this crazy stuff I had when I was young. While I was talking to her about it, we both agreed that this sucks. <laughs> and probably
probably the other thing to mention as well is just like when I was about the age of 16 or really just when I was in egg, I've reverted back to looking up a lot of gender bender media. <laughs> I was watching it before, I wasn't really sure why, but now it makes sense to me. A lot of people kind of joke about the idea of certain video games appealing to the ultimate male fantasy. Well, I feel like gender bending media is essentially appealing to the trans fantasy. Instead of having to deal with hormones, surgery, therapy, and just years and years of all this other stuff, all you have to do is just drink a magic potion, whisper a secret spell, or maybe even just wake up in the body that you want. I feel like that right there is the ultimate trans fantasy. But then again, I can say I'm a lot closer to being a beautiful woman than I was when I was first watching all this gender-bending media. Still, though, it would be fantastic if just, poof, I used to wake up as America's next top model. Actually, no, no, I, I don't want to be a model. I think back to Edna Mode from The Incredibles. Super models. Ha! Nothing super about them. Spoiled, stupid stick figures with poofy lips. I'd rather be a little more on the thicker side, like Eve. Okay, actually, probably not that thick because, wow, she looks like she has chronic back pain. And you know, I'm kind of finding it funny. I've made all these videos, but yet I've never really expressed what my end goal is in terms of, like, how I would want to be seen. And probably the best approximation I can think of is perhaps Nausicaa from the Valley of the Winds. That's the way I want to be seen. Obviously feminine, but yet strength through that femininity rather than weakness. In fact, come to think of it, it's it's a very hard thing to explain. Probably the only other example I can think of would probably be Ivy from Soul Calibur. The idea that these characters can find strength, perhaps confidence through their femininity, I really don't know how to explain it, but if you were to look up how these characters just kind of hold themselves, how they walk, how they dress, I think you can get what I'm going for. Maybe it's less about confidence and more the idea that instead of these characters being feminine in a submissive way, it's more them being feminine in a strong or powerful way. I don't know. Feel free to leave your opinions down in the comments on that. I had a rather unique experience, so on nice sunny days, I like to just kind of go outside and read whatever book I am reading. During COVID, this was one of the few things I was able to keep me sane. And what was rather interesting about this particular reading session, so it was a hot day and I was wearing some rather short shorts. And... My thighs got a really bad sunburn from it, which I was very surprised at as I was only out there for maybe a little over an hour, but I guess the sun was just that intense that day. And it just got me to thinking about after having bottom surgery, if I were to ever go around wearing a bikini, I would really have to put on the sunscreen, otherwise I would get sunburn and for me, would be considered really weird places. And again, when I used to go swimming, I would just go topless. And I guess maybe that's another thing to mention as well. So it's always been a bit of a stereotype that if you're trans femme, you felt very uncomfortable going topless whenever you went swimming. For the most part, this was not the case. I will admit, I felt very much uncomfortable in the locker room because I'm a lesbian. I do not want to be seeing all those male genitalia. <laughs> but there was one time in particular, I remember, I was at a friend's house. He had a pool. And it got to the point where we were all there in our swimming shorts and we all had shirts on. And we all just kind of stared at each other in just this weird 
moment of is it uncomfortable if they just start ripping these shirts off all of a sudden? It just seems a little unconventional and whatnot. I think there was somebody that did it first and then we all just kind of jumped into the pool and it was all fine from there. But to keep on this subject of swimming, towards the end of the month, the first cousins, my sister, brother-in-law, and nephew all went down to surprise my aunt for her 70th birthday. And it was fantastic because this hotel had a pool. And that was the first time I had gone swimming. Well, not only since I started transitioning, but just, gosh, probably 10 years at this point now that I'm thinking about it. And I can tell you, it's a whole nother experience swimming as a woman. First thing that's really struck me was the idea that the hair just kind of slowly follows you along the way and I guess that stands the reason. I had a rather modest swimsuit on. I basically imagine like what women wore in like the 1920s that was basically my swimsuit I had. So while I felt pretty safe in it for the most part the skirt section kept kind of Marilyn Monroeing its way up to the top and I will admit I felt a little exposed but other than that the water was great and it was just fantastic to start swimming again just felt like a fish returning to water I remembered all the techniques to be able to move around and I will admit the whole buoyancy factor is a bit different now but it was fantastic however that trip did have a bit of a detour so, all the while I was there, my sister kept referring to me as my dead name and uncle for my nephew's sake. This I was particularly disturbed by because I left it up to her as to how she wanted to tell my nephew about me. And it just made me wonder if she even told him at all. But I did kind of sneak it in a little bit, so as we were coming back, we decided to stop on for some fast food. And this is just one of those annoying things for me. Whenever they ask for a name, I always say Julia. They always hear Julian, so they put an N at the end. I am not the king from Madagascar. I am Nero's mother. But anyway... My nephew was sitting at the table while my sister and brother-in-law were busy ordering, so I decided to have fun with my nephew. I'm just like, I can never get my name right. And he's like, I, th I thought your name was this. And I'm like, not anymore. <laughs> it just didn't feel like it was my place to be able to explain it as it felt like I was undermining my sister's authority as a mother. But I at least wanted him to know what my name was. Of course, I do also want the title of Ant as well. That that would be nice. <laughs> In fact, I remember that was a bit of a fun thing, so... We all converged in this one restaurant to surprise my aunt. I remember one of my cousins brought it up. It's like, so, uh, as a former uncle, now aunt, how do you think your nephew's handling this? I just had to laugh at the way he said that. <laughs> I thought it was just genius. And I basically brought up the concerns that I brought up here. But either way, I figured that was just kind of a fun little anecdote to a more serious matter. I had another therapy session which gave me some very odd sense of gender affirmation. So I remember I was talking about how it feels like some days are better than others in terms of confidence in myself being a woman. There are some days where I feel very confident and I wear very tight fitting clothes. And then there's other days where I'm bringing out the big hooded sweatshirt or other very comfortable more baggy like things. And I just remember my therapist was just like, well... Welcome to being a woman. <laughs> the idea that 
There are some days we might feel prettier or more handsome than others. I guess that is a very shared experience. A good friend of mine told me very recently that he loved me. Not in a romantic sense, but just like really good friendship. And that really took me back because I don't think I have ever had anybody confess their love to me. Like, maybe if I'm in a friend group, I would get like a, hey, I like you, or I love you, no homo, or that was like the big phrase when I was going to junior high and high school. But this one sounded more legitimate. Like a good example I can bring up is my dad's side of the family, it felt like I had to hug everybody to say goodbye. There was no meaning behind it. It was just like how two businessmen give a handshake after a meeting. There, there's nothing behind it other than just a courteous gesture. But this one, this one, there was some genuine love there. And it really got me back to thinking. So, as I mentioned, I don't really remember anybody really confessing their love to me. And it wasn't until my senior year of college that I ever confess my love to somebody else's. I just never really had that inclination. But it seems like it's always a stereotype that there's like a friend of a friend that tries to set you up with somebody, or it's like, hey, you know, this person's nice, why don't you try and go out with them? I never really had that. I have maybe had people say that in a joking way, but never in a legitimate way, like, hey, you know, this person likes you. But at the same time, I get the feeling that it probably just came more from my aura that I was putting out. When I was in school, my main goal was just to get good grades so I could go to college, get a halfway decent job, and then I could start creating a more personal life. And I get the feeling that kind of aura just swayed people the wrong way, basically saying, oh, they're not interested in love. Well, I'm, I'm not going to bother with them. At least that's my theory anyway. Of course, the main reason I'm probably thinking about this is I saw this one video on the idea of pretty privilege. You might have heard of this, the idea that if somebody is really good looking, people are more tempted to be able to help them out. For instance, a gorgeous woman is having a very hard time trying to reach something on the top shelf. You can guarantee that there's going to be a few men willing to jump to her side, but yet if she's somebody that's a bit more average looking, like me, they're going to be like, eh. Though I can agree, there's definitely a dark side to pretty privilege. Like, if you're what society deems as, like, gorgeous or beautiful, then... There's kind of an expectation that you have to be that way all the time. Even though you got, like, no sleep and you just want everybody to leave you alone. So I guess in that way I dodged a bullet. But I will admit, it would be nice for somebody to call me pretty or beautiful or nice looking. Assuming that they weren't, like, really pervy or disgusting about it and... Well, I want them to be at least under the age of 40. I've had people older than that try to hit on me. That's all I've got for this month. As for upcoming events to celebrate Pride Month, I don't really have a whole lot on the docket. Is I don't know if it's burnout, the lack of sleep, my hormones being off, but I just find myself to have quite a lack of energy as of late. But I do want to at least do one video. Basically breaking down all the pride flags, potentially their history, if I can find it, and what they stand for. So if there's anything else you want to talk about, feel free to leave a comment down below. And until next time, be beautiful.